when it comes to cornbread, I don't care what side of the Mason-Dixon line you hail from. You need cast iron. Skillet, that is. Black gold, 10 inches wide at 425 degrees hot. So get this in here before you set up the rest of the gear. Construction begins with two cups of cornmeal. Now, I don't mind measuring this stuff by volume because unlike flour, cornmeal doesn't really compress. Oh, I prefer yellow corn because I think it just makes a tastier meal, but you can use white or even blue if you want. What really counts is the nature of the grind. Back in the bowl, we've got our cornmeal to which we will add one teaspoon of kosher salt and a tablespoon of sugar and two teaspoons of baking powder. And we're actually gonna use two different leavenings here. The baking powder, one, two, and a quarter teaspoon, actually a half teaspoon, of baking soda. Now, as you uh, probably remember from our biscuit show, the dough also rises. You've got to have a balance of acid and alkaline if you're going to have really great CO2 production, and that's what does the leavening. So in this case, we've got a balanced acid and alkaline combination, but we've thrown in extra alkaline. What's up with that? Well, because there's acid in buttermilk, and we're going to have a cup of buttermilk in the wet ingredients, and that's going to balance things. Oh, be sure to mix this stuff up. Dry leavenings don't like to be left in clumps. So, Cup goes in along with two eggs and eight ounces, that's one cup, of our cream corn. Cool, huh? Now, uh, you don't have to make your cream corn. You can use stuff just from the can from the grocery store. That's okay. But obviously, the flavor is not going to be the same. So whisk that together just until the eggs disappear. There you go. And then dump all of the dry right into the wet. Now I know, that's different from the usual procedure, but in this case it's okay because for one thing, cornmeal is not like flour. It won't clump up on contact with moisture. The other reason is that this will keep you from overmixing. And if you overmix cornbread batter, you end up with something flat like a Johnny Cake, and Johnny Cakes are different from cornbread. So stir and then stop and take a look. You might need to add more moisture to this, depending on the, the, the moisture content of your cornmeal or of the corn that you started with in the first place. You don't want it to look like cake batter, but you don't want a block of yellow either. This looks like a, a loose mortar, and that is exactly what you're looking for. Supply your cornbread with some spine by getting the pan ripping hot and then pouring in about two tablespoons of canola. Swirl that around just enough to coat, then pour the batter right in. Do this right here on the rack of the oven because you do not want to let this pan cool down. Don't stand around and talk to the oven either or uh, people might get the wrong idea. Anyway, get everything in there that you can and get it back in. Now, the uh, welding gloves, by the way, are not required. They're just here to prove a point. This handle is hot, okay? Of course, uh, if you've got welding gloves hanging around the house, why not? Now, some people like to use the old uh, toothpick test to check for doneness, but I have better luck with uh, what I kind of call the pillow test. That's a good name. Just to put your hand on top, and it's hot, but you'll be quick, and just push down. If it bounces right back up, then it's definitely finished. You know, the best thing about these multi-purpose lids is they really are multi-purpose. Behold. Not only is there a handle on the bottom to keep your hand unscathed, but the ridges help prevent your precious baked goods from ending up down in the dog zone. Plate, then just repeat, and there you go.